Welcome to what? Sorry, I'm, I'm just cleaning my glasses. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> just cleaning my glasses. You see arms moving just outside the frame. Maybe I should lay the penis. Mm, yeah. <laughs> mm. Hey, that was a private conversation. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, sitting at work, getting messages about uh, girth and rigidity, mm. hugs. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is just weird. I'm going to turn off the foot massager. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really bad. If you get someone a, a foot massager in, for Christmas present, it's just a, a small person in a package. <laughs> And slavery is frowned upon, I would say, and should be. <laughs> um, I um, uh, pre- previous back injuries, of course, I went to this uh, clinic that has uh, uh, oh, the the bone crushers, uh, but they also have like these um, what's it called? The, the the sports massager that do the. Well, it, it's borderline not comfortable kind of massage, but it really <laughs> loosens you up. <laughs> um, and that, that was that was nice. Uh, and of course, they they are professionals. I mean, you 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 could say that the others are professionals too, just different <laughs> trade. Um, but of course, we we moved, and now they're too far away, uh, and there's no one that I know of nearby except a lot of other regular massage parlors and i saw this uh <laughs> a news article it's a it's a it's an official government subdivision they did like some checks and it turns out that 75 percent of them provides additional services to <laughs> to massages and uh well like getting your nails done and stuff as well yeah that was my guess yeah 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 pedicures manicures yeah yeah the the full body workover, so to speak. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if ever I come over again, we'll have to go and see one. <laughs> <laughs> and then compare notes afterwards. <laughs> what, what did I uh, offer you? <laughs> you probably could use a manicure. You're working with your hands all day long. <laughs> yeah. They call them, for the men, they call it a sports manicure, don't they, in America? I wouldn't know, but yeah. No, I was... <laughs> to man it up a little. <laughs> yeah. that, that that was really fun. I, I actually went to a, a clinic once that, that has everything of the decent kind. And of course, I've never in my life had a, a pedicure. And then it's like, you need two ones in your life, don't you? So I, I, just, I just hooked up for that as well. And of course, you came in, and uh, this uh, lovely lady just propped up all the tools that they use. I don't know what angle they're grinder. Or... <laughs> yeah, and at that time, I was fairly active into martial arts, so my feet had really like rough skin. We just had some uh, training sessions, so I got I got blue marks and blisters and everything. And she's like, "Whoa!" <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> All right, when someone who's doing this for a job says, whoa, and all right, she hadn't seen that before. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, let's. Uh... <laughs> Do you stay in it? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> oh. I to thought fair, it was no. Tuesday. I'm a little confused now, I'll be honest. <laughs> it's <a> confused day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been confused for a, at least a week continuously now, so yeah. All right. Welcome to this episode of Number One Crude Mistakes with you three jolly hosts Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude But Efficient. And myself, Howard, from Behind the Mistakes. Welcome, guys. Hello. Closer to Christmas. Woo! Every day. Oh, nearly time to break up from work. 
That's nice. Oh, yeah. And then you come crawling back in January. Please, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that abusive uh, partner. I mean, <laughs> you need them, but you hate them. I abuse yeah. you. There, There's nothing good coming out of it. But yeah. You could see work relations as a abusive relationship, I guess. <laughs> so when do you break up, guys? Uh, too too late. 20th. Yeah, I'm the 20th too. Can't wait. But that's a Friday, isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah. On paper, I'm working that Monday on the 23rd. But I'm going away a few days next week for work, so I, I might work up a bit in the hourly bank so I can uh, have a fairly relaxed tw- 23rd. Yeah. Nice. That's the plan. Nice, nice. That's what you get for spending all your remaining holidays on uh, going drinking with your mother for a week. So that's <laughs> <laughs> a romantic trip away with your mum. Yeah. <laughs> Stop trying to relabel that, Havar. Yeah. We know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you ready then? Are you. Uh... All the the gifts are wrapped and the food is bought and pre prepared and that laugh indicates no from I mean, the Swedish wrapped. team. Yep. Uh, I mean, all the Christmas gifts that I need to order in have been ordered, so now it's not my fault. It's postal <laughs> service. Uh, so that feels good because then I have someone else to blame. Uh, so the rest of them are, are more or less going to to actual stores and buying. So that feels that feels good. Nice. I've bought a turkey and three packs of mince pies, and I've nearly eaten all the mince pies. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> so what's your usual? Uh, how many times do you restock the mince pies? I don't normally take such a shine to them, to be honest with you. But this year, I've got a real thing for them. I mean, I mean, I, I think you talked about them rather fondly last year as oh, well. Did I? But not not like this. Yeah, but I, I eat lots of mince pies, and then I also drink a lot over Christmas. So I forget <laughs> quite easily. <laughs> <laughs> I think since they started selling mince pies, I'm probably on about the sixth pack at least now so but i think they started selling them early november to be fair oh so these are seasonal foodstuffs then you know, oh yeah more, yeah you know, just mince, for christmas like know, a dog min- mince pies sound like something british that you have all year round yeah very much so no yes it does <laughs> <laughs> for us you know? from the outside <laughs> you don't have mince pies there yeah but all year nothing special not christmas christmas related Oh, okay. I don't know what mince pies are. It just sounds overly British, but <laughs> I think originally they had proper, you know, like meat in them. So they have, but they have what's called mince meat in them now, which is just raisins and all that sort of fruity stuff. But um, I think originally they did actually have meat in them as well. Yeah. Okay, so it's like more like a fruit cake pastry ish, or it's a shortcake pastry filled with fruit, if you like. Yeah, that's why. I'm... But more not, like Christmas cake it. fruit. Yeah, I mean Christmas cake. That's something we have. So it sounds more like that. Uh, and yeah. I, I did not know what it was. Apparently, oh. I'll have to get a box and see if I can save them until May. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, proper dry, hard. Yeah, yeah you can put with, them on with, your lathe by that time. <laughs> with all the with all the smash I've got saved over. <laughs> oh yeah, so so it's a miniature. Pie, but filled with uh, fruit and stuff. Yeah. That's pretty much what I said. Yeah, yeah but I, yeah, you have to Google it just to make sure I'm not lying to you. KJ. No, I found it because it sounded you, you were talking about like a, a fruit cake pastry thing, which is a different thing, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I, I always thought that mince pies were just were mi- minced meat, oh, like okay. a, like a Christmas flavored. I don't know, Santa flavored yeah. minced meat. Yeah, I'd probably be into that as well, to be fair. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I wasn't surprised. Yeah. 
They also sound nice. <laughs> anyway, that's the extent of my Christmas shopping. What about you, Havar? I am... In that regard, I'm very lucky. Um, my wife's a foodie, um, so she takes charge in that department. And uh, she and a friend actually took the day off work today to go to Sweden to get all the shit we don't get over here. And uh, yeah, um, the car was sitting very much lower on the return trip than it was <laughs> leaving this uh, this morning. Uh, and I had to help carrying everything in and f- finding room for it in every nook and cranny of the kitchen. Um, so yeah. So what did she get from Sweden then? Um, cheese, uh, chocolates, crackers. Uh, yeah, that, that was it really. And then of course uh, all these uh, drinks <laughs> and things for the kids oh, okay. and some. Yeah. Um, so what we are really missing is uh, all the meat and the, the main courses for the well, basically the Christmas dinners. But they weren't cheaper in Sweden because it's some weird Norwegian traditional dish. So of course it's probably exported and heavily taxed if you're going to buy it in Sweden as well. Because I mean <laughs> some of it is a biohazard per definition. Uh, so getting it to Sweden, it's probably hard just getting it through the customs. So <laughs> yeah, better to source that locally. So that's Christmas out of the way. Should we talk making instead? Have you done any? I mean, I was going to aim it at you. Both of you have published videos in the Uh, last couple of days. Yeah, with some sexy time in it. (laughs) (laughs) A little too much censoring, I would say, (laughs) for my taste. (laughs) I mean, that was a prime moment for you to just play with the dolls and do all the... (laughs) Different weird combinations. Have you seen Team America World do... Police? That's uh, that's the scenes I was thinking of. Would you like me to do is there a, a, is there a, a special? Movie? Have I have I, have I missed a release here? I can't really. On my videos. Yeah, I, I think it's but doll porn. I can't remember seeing a video. <laughs> that's what I said. It was censored. I need, I need to go back in. Yeah. Crap. <laughs> they just mag- magically had a kid instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, you know, if you if you really want an adult special version of snowmen copulating KJ, I can uh, <laughs> sort that out for you if you like. <laughs> Please do. Please do. <laughs> I, w- I was so happy when, when I watched the video and it's like, <laughs> you made the first one and, oh, he should make the whole... Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> And then it was two and like, all right, then, then, oh, you should, and then, oh yeah, there it is, there it is. So, yeah, I'm not sure if that says more about you than me, but. <laughs> yeah, so just for the listeners, if, if you've not seen the video, I made a uh, a snowman out of wood, basically on the lathe, and then I made a wife for him and a child. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Adult version on the way for you, KJ. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, you you were kind of promising something in the last pod episode, and yeah, I think you, you held back. I think it's quite nice to leave things up to the imagination. I mean, I wouldn't even know how a snowman would do things. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> do they do it in the regular human way, or I don't know. I haven't uh, made a snowman that way. <laughs> <laughs> or, I mean, yeah. with all that. We all know what happens in the cold with all that snow and ice. I mean, does it even still work? <laughs> or does it work really well? Um, maybe. Just have to be quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Get> it... <laughs> I'm not going to say it. <laughs> anyway, KJ, what about your making? <laughs> Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, getting hot in here. <laughs> let's let's get to the sauna. Oh no, that's Finland. Okay, sorry. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> well, I have made some progress uh, on the um, a robotic hand. 
which is now more than a hand, but still not finished. Um, uh, because, oh, what's it called? Um, the fingertips uh, is what is left. And me having to decide if I'm going to permanently affix everything to everything or just keep it press fitted as it is and with the occasional finger falling off if that's okay <laughs> so you say it's more than a hand has it gone into an arm as well now or yes it has uh, a bit more uh, yeah my twin sets are handful <laughs> <laughs> sorry just had to get it out of the way all right yeah yeah and i'm just happy that i probably wouldn't won't have to take it apart and put it back together so many times more. Um, so that's that's nice. Yeah. You Have you started editing the video for it or anything yet, KJ? No. Uh, no, I still don't feel like it. I feel most like taking the time to actually finishing it. Finishing it. Uh, so, and yeah. just, just let us know if you if you need some ideas, I'm, I'm pretty sure that me and Glenn can uh, <laughs> help you out here. <laughs> I'm sure you can. <laughs> I think we'd already offered up a few ideas, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I have taken inspiration or potentially might, maybe will. I haven't done anything yet, but I have listened to the ideas and have some of them percolating in the back of my mind. So maybe we'll see what happens. Yeah. Am well, I the best ideas, KJ? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> That's all that really matters. <laughs> As always. Otherwise, I haven't done that much. Uh, I cleaned out the bag filter on the dust collection, which it desperately needed. Uh, <laughs> because I, I have one of those where you have the big, big bag thing blowing up like a... Uh, uh, what's it called? The uh, one of those car wash men. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> the inflatable Flop, floppy guys. Is, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, I really dislike it. Uh, so I, I, I was kind of thinking if I should try and replace it with some kind of more, what's it called, uh, the solid filters. But those are so darn expensive for for dust collection. At least the ones I've seen, they're okay. like uh, a couple of hundred quids for. Oh wow! For them, uh, and I, they have they've stopped. I know that they made one for the one I have in the before times, but they've discontinued that. So then I started looking at at air filters for cars because those are <laughs> they are some that are in the right dimension for it. Yeah, and I wonder if that might work, perhaps. It's definitely worth a go. It might go faster if anything, nothing else. <laughs> I should put a turbo on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know if the HEPA uh, standard is uh, something that air filters for cars take in consideration, but they're a lot cheaper, at least. Yeah. Maybe I have to stack a couple to get the same uh, volume. Did some calculations on it, but... Here, here's an idea. Um... Last time we were in the States, I learned that that, that my wife thinks these uh, the car dealership uh, guys are really funny. And then you get the small table versions, of course. Uh, it's a small fan with the... What are they called? Flappy hands, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but then I also found when I was looking at various websites, you can get them relatively cheap, like the proper sized ones and i'm like should i just get her one as a gift as a gag but now i thought maybe maybe you should incorporate that with your workshop so whenever <laughs> you turn your dust collection off there is this guy outside like woo, woo, hands all over <laughs> and it's fantastic a faint yeah. rain of sawdust from the fingertips yeah. as well <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the neighbor is like all right kj's in the workshop again <laughs> And of I mean, course, in the win really winter time, you can swap it over for those inflatable snowmans that people tend to put up. So yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. That would be fantastic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is an 
yeah, it's it's a lot better than I thought it would be when you started talking. <laughs> <if I'm honest. laughs> That's what we say at the end of every Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's, that's true. <laughs> hmm. How can I... Because, I mean, I've all, already put a dragon on the ventilation. Uh, so, hmm. Yeah, because there is, like, it's it's a dime a dozen uh, when it comes to videos out there for dust collection. So you need to stand out. Um, <laughs> this is a way of doing it. Yeah, because I was thinking, hmm, should I just hook it up to the uh, ventilation hole and just blow the excess outside? But having that fine uh, sawdust, the thing that doesn't fall to the bottom of the What the if you use your dragon head as the exhaust vent? Forget the, the flippity floppity guy. Uh, and you just have yes, a I... oversized propane burner. So you just, anything that goes out there gets singed. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> flames. <laughs> yeah, but fine particles in the air that would burn very well. Uh, yeah, I actually did Think about that. The problem is that we have the uh, the the fan motor is just inside the wall, so the dust had to go through the the fan actually for the from the actual radon ventilation, and I don't think that would like it. Uh, it would just clog. Otherwise, no. it's a uh, it's a yeah. good idea. I was thinking <laughs> that if I ever get a laser, I would hook up that. Uh, uh, to uh, have the air have exhaust, uh, the air exhaust go, yeah. so so we can actually have the dragon breathe them some <laughs> smoke if I <laughs> cut something burning. Uh, but yeah, but sawdust, I think that is a good good thing. Then I then I would need a second dragon. I think. Well, it's not a bad thing, is it? No, you can't have too many dragons. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> no, uh, and that's the thing. I mean. Sawdust is a bit like flour. It's the right uh, mixture with air. It's highly flammable. So if you make a system, you can have a traditional um, dust collection system. And then, of course, when it builds to a certain level where you have enough to like torch it off, like an offshore oil rig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you... an oil rig, exactly. <laughs> You have something that just instantly over. Uh, of course, you have a compressor, so it just every five minutes it just purges and flushes everything out, and then of course light it to the fire. So then, just every five ten minutes, the dragon outside is like, <laughs> and you're good to go, and you never have to empty that bag manually ever again. Yeah, point point it at the driveway, keep it clear of snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or nosy neighbors or Jehovah's yeah. Witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a blast this day. I was I was drinking a cup of coffee. I was scrolling on my phone. The kids were running around screaming. So I just, where's the safest place to get some peace and quiet? And of course, right in before bedtime, of course, their rooms are the best place because they stay <laughs> away from them. So, so it's just inside one of my daughter's room drinking a cup of coffee and scrolling on my phone and there's a knock on the door. And the kid's like, ooh, who is it? And I'm like, okay, it's probably the neighbor's kid. No, it's a bit late. Who can it be? And then, mommy, 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 there's an adult outside. And then I heard my wife just go and open the door and hello. And yep, that was the Jehovah's Witnesses. And I was just like, I'm not getting out. So <laughs> just listening to her, trying to like, all right, how do I kill this conversation? Yeah. And and of course, she's a... She's lovely and polite and everything. She's like, all right, yeah, yeah, no, we're not real. No, okay, yes, yes. And I was just <laughs> drinking my coffee and like... <laughs> <laughs> then you need to have uh, some kind of uh, uh, Norwegian black metal music lined up and play on the speakers in the background and just <laughs> increasing the volume to see if they... <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, then you are in the right demographic for them. I mean, if they're just knocking on your door and, oh, we're, we're already Jehovah's Witnesses. Which branch are you? Oh, all right. Sorry, sorry. Okay, you're not the target audience. And then they leave. So <laughs> ah, yeah, that's a way to do it. Apparently, the a... best thing to do is to tell them that you you were a Jehovah's Witness and you've been thrown out. Apparently, they, <laughs> they leave the driveway running then. <laughs> Discommunicated. Oh, yes. yeah. Take me back. Take me back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, my life I felt so empty without you. Oh, please. <laughs> I want back. I want back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't. It, I didn't mean to. And then you have to reference something that they appall, which I, I yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, we haven't offended any of our listeners, but <laughs> yeah, it happens. So, Hover, what about you? You video publisher. Yeah, I had the ornament maker. I had a good maker week. I, I, I surprised myself I was just sitting on Sunday and like I got stuff done before Christmas. It's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, I, I finished a Die Hard project and I got the video out and I had some natural stops in the project where I actually did some pre-editing of the video. So once it was finished, I was like at 80% of the video, which, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, that turned out great. And of course, if it wasn't so labor intensive, I, I'd start selling them. But, uh, <laughs> the, the funniest part was, I, I mean, the, the YouTube video is had mediocre views, <laughs> not worth mentioning, but I posted a short over at TikTok and that got like 12,000 views. And of course, what I did not plan for but which is blatantly obvious in hindsight is that just reference Die Hard as a Christmas movie and of course the first dimwit comes along and <laughs> Die Hard is not a Christmas movie and then I was like oh yeah I'm gonna stir up some <laughs> shit I need to get a cup of tea and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna put some petrol on this bonfire and by the time I got down they are perfect <laughs> done that themselves <laughs> so I was just sitting back watching where people arguing back and forth and I was just liking here and <laughs> just putting some sparks in there so yeah <laughs> so that's been jolly fun and yeah the, the project turned out great I've got to admit I saw 40 minutes on the video and thought nope <laughs> <Not too bad." laughs> yeah. sorry yeah there were some parts that could have been cut down I mean there were lots of supports on that 3D print. <laughs> Thanks for bringing us along for all of the peeling off of that. <laughs> Actually, I watched that bit. To, 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 the to seven be... minutes of peeling plastic. <laughs> to, to be fair, though, it, it was more than seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the sped up version. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, was, it was a cut down bill montage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that uh, that's the thing, though. It was the first thing really aligned with the music so at some point i could cut down here but it was really nice to end on that beat putting it down so all right i'll have to keep that uh and then it was the peeling part and i did of course talk while doing it so i was all right, if we're cutting out this now then i sound like a crazy person on speed because so it's like, okay i should probably just put some background music to it and speed it up but it is what it is and uh yeah. Well, you were seven minutes removing those supports. In seven minutes, you could have put a video out about making a slide whistle and got 9.7 thousand views. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, but... It's not to each I'm true. About. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. You should always edit the video you want to put out. <laughs> but it's got to be 20 minutes or under for me to look at it, I'm afraid. <laughs> I watched it at one and a half point speed, so... <laughs> and that, that time speed i mean yeah. yeah that i think is a top tip for me because i am a slow speaker as well so i mean at at 1.5 for some people it sounds sped up for me it sounds normal <laughs> <So>. yeah <laughs> yeah except for the music <laughs> that, that, that's that's a telltale sometimes but yeah. yeah there are very few youtube channels that i watch in normal speed because they actually talk fast most of them need at least 1.25. Some need 2.0, actually. <laughs> yeah. And I, I remember watching a video from... Uh, uh, what was his name again? Um, that Aussie... Uh, Bow, Bow, Bow... Oh, Bow. Yeah. Bow Marger. I want to call him Bow yeah. Bridges then for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, I, I pronouncing his name is one thing, but every time I'm going to search, you know, like, how does he actually write it? It's, it's, I have a mental block on that. But and anyhow, he's a very good storyteller. And in some of the videos, he and his editor were going through the process of writing the script and telling things. And then, of course, you, you cut it down to a certain point and then you think you're good, but you're only at the halfway mark. And then you have to cut it down half after that and i was watching that video and yeah that yeah that that makes sense perfectly <laughs> sense and i i feel that i've taken that to heart because i i'm cutting down <laughs> i'm still putting out 40 minute videos but <laughs> i mean when you have eight to ten hours of footage i mean uh, it's percentage wise is very good but of course uh, watching the end results not knowing that uh, yeah i've got my fingers crossed right now that kj gets to edit your video for the lump along of all we'll put the slowest editor in charge of the most footage yeah <laughs> yeah if it goes the other way i mean <laughs> He only get mm. half an hour of footage from me. I don't know how he's going to speed <laughs> spread that out an hour. Oh, we're going to slow it down, do replays, and yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> watch me. <laughs> uh, we'll get back to that though, because I've actually got someone listened to our last episode, and I'm like, all right, if you if you need a, if you need a planer, you can come to my workshop. So people are. Uh, actually listening to us what we're saying and uh, <laughs> and then of course being supportive i mean if you don't have the tools nice. you can come and borrow mine which is nice yeah. uh, uh, of course I, but then i'll lose the uh well the reason to get my own tools so yeah but so it, yeah, it, but it's, some... it's nice visiting uh, other people sometimes <laughs> so and you need to try them out as well to know what you want yeah, exactly yeah. You can come and try mine out and realize you don't want that one. <laughs> <laughs> Already know I don't want that yeah. one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so who's offered to help you out? Oh, it was the dinosaur guy, Steel. Oh, yeah. nice. And he's, he's not far away from me either. So it would be nice to go and visit, even not using his tools. So, yeah, I think that might happen on the other side of New Year's. Oh, I'm, I'm seeing him next week, actually. Yeah, me too. Nice. You too. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stian's going to be a guest on on the pod next week, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. looking forward to that. <laughs> Can bring his plane along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make sure it is in the background so we can discuss it on the podcast. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> All right. That's, so let's move the lamp along uh, discussion to, the, to, to then then. Um. But making wise, yeah, um, of course, the diehard thing was out of the way. Um, and I have another thing out of the way, almost. I I got a few hours alone time on Sunday, so and that's why I was so late to recording today because my. Here we go again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My entire studio, if you can call it that, was set up for not recording a podcast, but uh, recording me playing the Hellcorder. So I have all the videos. I put everything onto the timeline. So in theory, I have the music video ready. I mean, it needs tweaking and adjustments and so on, but I've, I've filmed everything that I need to film. So I know it's it will happen before Christmas. Of course, there are some... I might get some additional input. I'm not going to disclose too much details here, but uh, yeah. So I'm just sitting on the fence waiting. So we'll see. But yeah, it's going to be... Uh, I, I'm not going to say the, a great happening before Christmas, but for me, it's like I can finally put the 2.0 to rest and... yeah procrastinating the the 3.0 <laughs> so sometime into next year when are you hoping to release the music video it, sh it should really be next week shouldn't it i'm thinking maybe next i mean if you're listening to this it's going to be this weekend isn't it or is it no this is going to be released on the saturday, saturday. so it's next 
so yeah, the, the week before <laughs> Christmas, <laughs> what, whenever, whatever comes That's first. Yeah. yeah, the week before Christmas is next <clears throat> week. Yeah, so <laughs> next week then. <laughs> <laughs> In a few days, yeah. As this comes out, and yeah. To be fair, and I can, of course, to our esteemed listeners, I I can tell you as much. It is, it's a two in one. Of course, it's it's the it's the the music video, if you, if you can call it a music video. Um, and then, of course, as a segue to that, of course, I've also been filming a video where, like, all right, we we need to make a Christmas song. I mean, how hard can that be? I, I've teased the intro for that. Um, so I have a segment on how to go along about making a Christmas song, and then it segues into the actual song. And as of now, the total playing time of that, uh, and you'll be pleased to hear that, Glenn, it's uh, under 12 minutes, which means I don't have any footage that will allow it to be longer. So... <laughs> yeah, you might want to watch the whole thing. Maybe. Did you? I'm sorry. Did you say the song's twelve minutes long, or the whole video? Oh, the whole video. So, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not listening to a song that's twelve minutes long. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not David Gilmore, so it's not going to be Pink, Pink Floyd uh, grade material here. So, no, it's a, it's a pop rock tune, if you can call it that, at best, at the three minutes and sixteen seconds. So the rest is just me talking as usual. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'm really looking forward to this one and yeah 12, 12 minutes just about right <laughs> yeah and I it's of course I, I've watched myself back and forth on that video now probably a thousand times so I've I've gone past the initial cringe so it's like don't expect a masterpiece because this it's far from but uh, I mean it's a comedic relief based on the a recorder based guitar amplifier so but it, it's nice i i now see that i can put this out and people will understand that this is not a serious uh, attempt at music whatsoever and uh, <laughs> yeah i can stand by that so uh, as, as it helps you get over the cringe sort of releasing it to me and kj and then the cmo group and then the little snippet you put out as well for the rest of the world on instagram yeah yeah it helps and i i think by that time, I I knew that this is something I I can release and I'm gonna release yeah. it. So I've been sitting on a lot of footage for a long time, and then I just realized, all right, this is gonna happen. And it's 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 a little bit like you say. I mean, sometimes you have to get out the side of your comfort zone and uh, just accept the invitation. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna happen. And I mean week before Christmas is plenty of time to uh, get nerves and double back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be brilliant. Yeah, I've been doing a bit of uh, tinkering over the weekend in the workshop as well. I've been, um, it's, so it started out with this musical instrument thing that I've in my head. And I think currently that's branched out through tinkering and experimenting into about three other projects. All or none of them might um, <laughs> Might happen, <laughs> or, <laughs> so we we'll just have to see how that goes. Is a so no not, no so, details to reveal now. Though. No, 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 not really. Um, other than it may or may not happen, and uh, it might be three projects separately as well from it all. Through um, searching, looking for electronics and stuff like that, I've also bought some other bits and bobs for other things that I didn't know existed. Talk, <laughs> <laughs> talk, talking about electronics. Uh, uh, and we'll we'll segue into you actually buying some new tools. But I I forgot. But I spent entire Saturday soldering because uh, our friend uh, at the Brock uh, Guitar Pedal uh, arranged a course in Oslo. So it was like a six hour build your own guitar pedal, and he just brought all the parts. And I think we were maybe. 20 persons i mean it's 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 makers and a lot of musicians so it's, it's a lot of wonderfully weird people gathered around in a room making a lot of noise and getting high on soldering fumes so um, <laughs> nice so i i have it's nice. my first guitar pedal actually that 
I have owned. No, it's my second, but this one I have built and it's, I mean, professional in that sense that I've been told what to do. Well, <laughs> 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 uh, it, it was a, a lovely experience and it was like the perfect amount of theory and practice and, of course, uh, inside jokes from the music industry uh, and uh, yeah i had a blast and i'm really looking forward to uh, to building the other parts that we have um and then i thought we could do uh we could do a collaboration kind of type uh, we, we could do uh, i also thought maybe we should do this live but then again if it took six hours to build one yeah. <laughs> Do we want to have, have our first live be, be a six hour trying to figure out the, this, uh, how to solder a pe pedal <laughs> without the proper guidance? Maybe not, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm where I almost have all the parts now and you started buying tools for it, I see. Do you want I, to elaborate, Glenn? <laughs> I didn't buy tools for that in particular. I just, I bought myself a new soldering station for other projects and things because I think it was about 10 years ago I spent seven whole pounds from Lidl or Aldi <laughs> on uh, two soldering irons one of which is packed up and the other one takes forever to heat up and solder doesn't like sticking to it or it just doesn't work very well so I bought myself a, a little soldering station which is absolutely fantastic I plugged it in yesterday for the first time and I couldn't believe how quickly it heats up Within ten, ten seconds, it's up to it's up to heat. Nice, yeah, yeah that's and it nice. Works and it just it just works basically, <laughs> and it works efficiently. So yeah, very pleased with it. It's not a particularly expensive one. I think it was on offer from Amazon, so it got about a tenner off, but it was under thirty quid. Mm, nice, oh, yeah. nice, it works nicely. Very happy with it. So, do you need to do some modifications to your um, to your workshop then, like a, a fume extractor and so on? Because that was the hot topic. Of course, you have different kind of solders with or without lead, and uh, of course, we uh, had uh, some discussions. Is it good to breathe this? Is this good for you? And like, <laughs> and I was sitting. I I did not say that, of course, but I'm I'm doing the. The soldering's version of the safety squint, of course. Uh, yeah. I, I prepare everything and then I hold my breath while I do the soldering. <laughs> and then, of course, when I have to breathe out before breathing in again, I use that breath of air to just blow the fumes away and just yeah. like turn the other way. And <gasps> uh, I, I'll tell you something: once you've owned a laser and you've done acrylics and wood inside the workshop, you you don't you don't even think about the soldering; it barely gives off anything. <laughs> 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 it's just a matter of comparison. All right, okay. Yeah, Good. yeah, I'll yeah. Make, take some yeah. notes. Yeah. You try cutting. <laughs> you try cutting plywood in your workshop on the laser with the door shut. See how long you stay conscious. <laughs> <laughs> Learn that the hard way. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you need a fume extractor. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> when I was looking at the soldering stations, actually, you can you can buy them with built-in fume extractors. It's obviously yeah. just filtering, so I don't know how efficient they are, but uh, yeah, no, didn't didn't decide to go for that. I've never given extraction a thought when I've been soldering. But that's the thing, though. I've seen, of course, I want a new soldering iron, but I, I realize the one that I have is the same that you use on the course, uh, and it's, it's dirt cheap, but it, it works. Uh, it just takes two minutes to warm up properly, but... I have that kind of time, and I, I wanted the one, the small pen size one that really yeah, heats yeah. up quick, and you can use a USB charger or whatever. But when do I ever solder away from my soldering station? But yeah, the hassle of that wire, of course. But I realized that also the the small ones with the USB they they need the the cable anyway, yeah. unless you have a big one that's on gas or really bulky battery but then it's a pain to use as well so uh those little usb ones are only about six or seven quid from china you know i've been looking at the, i mean the ones that get good reviews easily like 60 70 pounds which oh, is right. like 
do I want to spend that on something that when I have one that mm, I'm okay. using stationary that works? But I I have been thinking about the fume extractor also because I, I tend to burn a lot of shit and there there is an outlet on the wall just right above my head so I could just have some flexible conduit and a PC fan. All right, focus there, camera. Come on. <laughs> yeah, something like a, a cooker hood would work, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's. I don't, I, I don't want a cooker hood in my workshop. <laughs> you know, that's that's a bloody good idea because my my wife actually bought a new one for our kitchen because she was tired of banging the head in the one we had. So you wanted one with an angle. That means that when we swap out the old one, it has no value left selling it so yeah. uh, of course there there is a motor in there but i can use the entire hood yeah nice. i think i made marco made one for his laser out of a cooker hood yeah yeah yeah, yeah because I, I i realized that 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 air inlet is in the very corner where i sit so i also thought i mean i've already butchered my uh garage door i put a door in it and i put a window in to let some more lights in because we're going to do something to that wall anyway so i did think should i just cut a big hole and put a huge ass fan in it so of course <laughs> when you're doing cleaning with the compressor and so on of course you're just blowing dust around but some of it will fall back and just find new places to settle but if you have a good enough fan in your door, and as long as I have an inlet in that corner, I could get a decent airflow through my workshop. So, of course, when cleaning, it will bring out any debris. But also when I'm doing uh, soldering, I can have like a, like a, a mild breeze going through the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> One of those giant five foot fans in the doorway. So it looks really cool behind you, just slowly spinning. <laughs> That's what they exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah, like some eighties <laughs> movie, like flash yeah. dance or something exactly. like that. Yeah. <laughs> With a backlit. Um, yeah. yeah. Throwing shadows, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I do have one of those, <laughs> what's it called? Ultrasonic, uh, like the vapor makers for, uh, decoration and uh so yeah i could have that as well i mean you have the slow turning fan in the background and just on random you hear this fish, fish, and some steam letting yeah. out from some random pipe <laughs> yeah that would be cool <laughs> oh i need a smoke machine yeah. <laughs> that'd be so cool <laughs> and that, that's the cool thing though i mean the 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 liquid for the smoke machines are relatively expensive but i mean you have well, it goes a long way. And now you get smoke machines. I mean, it's basically just small, like these wapes. But you get them in a pocket size. So, so now you can actually put them in everything and make smoke. So, yeah, smoke machine. That's, uh... <laughs> if if Christmas, Christmas were a lot... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, but we, we don't have Amazon overnight. So, yeah, it's too late for that. So. That's the thing, though. I ordered a lot of parts on AliExpress, and it, it seems like our friends in China are in a hurry to get things done before Christmas, because I ordered something, and then it's like, oh, it's already on the way, it's in flight, and of course, I know it's in flight, so it's going to arrive relatively quick, and I was just in uh, tracking all the, the parcels, and all right, everything between the 16th and the 30th of December. So will I get it before Christmas or will I get some surprise packages like in the <laughs> between Christmas and New Year's? Because then I will have some spare time to just sneak off to the workshop. So, yeah. Yeah, I did uh, four things from China on Friday night. No, Saturday night after Michelle's Christmas party, works Christmas party, and I had a few to drink. I went on Timo, <laughs> and I ordered a... time to do it. Yeah, I ordered a few things, and one of them actually came yesterday. So that oh, must have been in the country already. Some some of them I see they they ship from different countries, so they yeah. actually uh, like from Czechoslovakia, and I've seen some parts actually come from France, and that that is just a uh, well, compared to China, it's yeah. at the neighbors basically. <laughs> Yeah, but even so, even from any other European country, that's still bloody quick, isn't it? Yeah. Saturday to Monday. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, 
we've been taking the piss out of the Swedish postal system. And of course, e- even on Saturday, the at the pedal course, you can see the, the faceplate here is just a sticker because the, the faceplate was sent by the Swedish postal service and it got lost and then it got returned. And yeah, it, it's the whole story. Um, but today I received the postcards I sent from Rome. So, um, the Italian post officer is giving the Swedish one a run for their money. So I'm I'm very glad. I don't know anyone in Italy that I need to send stuff to because, uh, yeah. Did you send yourself postcards from Rome? Dear self, I'm having a lovely romantic <laughs> yeah. time with my mother. Uh, <laughs> Drinking up post so friends. That, yeah. <laughs> no, of, of course, the kids are complaining because we never get anything in the mail. So, so I, I send them postcards when I'm... Uh, away for more than a day um so it was for them um, <laughs> but i also think it's it's nice and i kind of regret because for the last year or so I, I haven't continued my trend of sending postcards to random people i don't know um <laughs> but it's become expensive to send postcards as well yeah it's like uh yeah it's not fun anymore <laughs> <laughs> I sent some packages now. I paid more for shipping than the value of the package. And yeah. it like, yeah. and I mean, it is, it's even within the country. So it's like, yeah, soon it's going to be cheaper. Just to drive it up yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I sent uh, two packages out yesterday and it costs far more for the postage. <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> It makes you wonder what kind of deals the like Timo and that sort of thing uh, gets with shipping stuff. Yeah, because I mean, it's some, be cheap to do it. Someone is getting the the shit end of the stick because I I googled it at some point and there is some inter country postal agreement because you you pay for postage and you send it and it's of course it's handled by your local post office until it crosses the border and then it's another postal service this problem and then of course you could say that all right but i mean if there is an equal amount of packages going back and forth of course uh, we take the cost f- for everything that happens in our country and other way around but i'm not sure how this works with for instance, China, because they are the, the big producer in this world. But I, I can't see there are going equal amount of packages from Norway to China as it is the other way around. So no. how how they figure out that split, I'm not sure. But no. Just going back to that guitar pedal, Havel, we got um, one circuit board when we were in Scar- at Scarpa Festival, didn't we? Yeah. And that that pedal that you built there has got two in it, hasn't it? Yeah, so it is a main circuit board, basically as the one we got. Uh, and there's a smaller one which actually go on the switch. So it, it's not... Uh, okay. It doesn't have very much components on it. It's just an easier way of soldering the, the wires to that plate uh, instead of to the individual pins on the switch. So it, it doesn't uh, okay. really... And of course, the dumb thing is, I uh, being at that course, of course, he had a lot of parts and different things. So, uh, of course, at Scarpet Festival, and we we got one circuit board which doubles as his business cards, which is yeah. it's a it's a nice gimmick, of course. Um, but he has more. So oh wow! I I, I have uh, several projects, so I have. <laughs> I think next year, uh, I'm not going to make videos of all of it, but I, I now have three pedals I'm going to build. Nice. What do they do? Um, one is a fuss pedal. Uh, the one I built was... Uh, it's a it's a mild distortion pedal. And the third one, I'm not quite sure he he said something that uh, got lost in translation (laughs) (laughs) he said words in sentences who knows could have been anything (laughs) i mean you're you're in a room with a lot of people who are building uh, uh, 
basically a, a noisy box for your amplifier and of course they set up all the instrument and they tested so there <laughs> i had a headache already uh, going there so when i left i was re i was of course we were discussing going out having a beer or something but uh, yeah massive headache but but the the good thing was he, he had one these pedals you can't buy so the only way of getting this specific pedal you have to attend one of the courses which is which is really cool um and he had a, a demo one because of course you have some resistors in there and you have some diodes and depending on which one you're using they did change the sound i mean how much bass do you get how much distortion and he made one with like a, a kind of breadboard approach where you could take a lot of components and you could just swap them around and sound how it oh, wow. sounds like. So we had one demo pedal rigged up and a lot of like, it looks like bags of cocaine, but it's basically electrical components and you could just go and plug in whatever you fancied and just, all right, this looks cool. All right, this looks, sounds cooler. This, no, this is not for me. And once you find the sound that you like the most, you just, brought that components with you and used them in your pedal. So, oh, I mean, we were 20 people there and everyone had, there's not an identical pedal. So it's one specific to the nice. sound that you like, which I really like. So you, you, you basically almost don't find these on any online marketplace because people who attend a course and built them, they, they never sell them. So that's, that's very I cool. like that concept. Yeah. yeah. I mean, isn't that the thing with guitar players to find their specific sound? Yeah. And of course, in this one, it has two diodes, which are glass diodes. And uh, it I think they're called germanium or something. Uh, the name alone is cool. <laughs> That's a plant. <laughs> yeah. Germanium. And, <laughs> and they don't make them anymore. So it's like... Uh, it's like one of those uh, old timey displays that uh, was like a uh, tube uh, based uh, in like the 50s and 60s. Uh, you, you can still buy them from Russia because they have a surplus, but they're not in making it. So I just, all right, I'm going to use those. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just don't drop the pedal. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the downside, though. They, yeah. they, they can shatter. Uh, but of there's course, also. Now, You've also got one other circuit board on its way to you as well, because I picked up one that you didn't at uh, Scarpa Festival and had no idea what it did, so I just thought I'd send it to you. Well, maybe that's one of the other ones that I now got. It's not. It's not from. It's not from Brack. It was from another maker, actually. Oh yeah, that's the base. With yes. The other company. Yeah, he he was there as well attending the course. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, of course, they were bashing him quite. I mean. It was a room full of guitar players, and you had one bass uh, player. Oh, right. uh, bass. So, yeah, he got, uh, yeah, this, this is simple <laughs> enough for a bass player to understand. So, you know, there's, there's some friendly <laughs> banter there. <laughs> Isn't the bass player the one who gets all the girls? Because he's not focused on his instrument and just uh, masturbating <laughs> in a corner. He actually has time to be flirty on stage. <laughs> yeah. Did everybody get their drummer to drive them there in the van as well? <laughs> <laughs> have a parking lot filled with drummers just sitting in their car yeah. just tapping <laughs> yeah. on the steering wheel <laughs> the only reason drummers get into bands isn't it because they have a van to transport the rest of the band around <gasps> he has so a van a he, can, he can be a drummer yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a tried drums, but I find them intriguing. And I mean, some people have said that uh, I marched to the beat of my own drum at several occasions. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe I should just get a van and then someone like, oh, do you play the drums as well? No, but would you like to give it a go? Yeah, you're in a band. <laughs> cool. Always wanted to do that. So yeah, but it falls right into the plan of spending this winter. Of course, now it's it's dark outside, it's soggy, it's wet. So now I'm going to do small electrical projects um, that put the big, uh, messy wood projects. Uh, I'll postpone them until March at least. Yeah, same. 
I'm just going to carry on as normal. <laughs> just, just make a mess in your workshop. That's what it's for. It's a workshop. Yeah, but I mean... You never carried on as normal. <laughs> <laughs> Stop lying. <laughs> carry on we, for my normal. <laughs> we like to go outside as well. <laughs> when we do messy stuff. <laughs> I like to do my filming so nobody has any clue what time it is apart from my watch is always in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> and that you have full control over. So Yeah. <laughs> so what's that at the end of the episode then? Well, we were I talking so. about time, weren't we? So, yeah. 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 Maybe it's, it's time. that time. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Bye. See you next week, I guess, at Christmas. Oh, yeah. Christmas yeah. episode. Christmas episode with Stenosaurus. Yeah, ah, it's the winter dinosaur solstice, guy <laughs> uh, for the first one and the uh, half pint on Christmas. Yeah. All right, <laughs> you enjoy whatever time you're having, and I'll uh, go to Udio and uh, see if I can't make a dinosaur theme tune. So, oh, all right, yes. hang tight. <laughs> see you in the half pint uh, next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>